Hey, no more horsepower guessing games for us. Yeah, wait till you see the latest addition to our shop in action. Today on Horsepower TV, take cover for a small block shootout. We'll explore the new Chevy and Ford crate engines before we bolt them to our new engine dyno to see who's got the top horsepower numbers. So hang on for Horsepower TV. Hey, welcome again to Horsepower TV. There's an ongoing argument between Ford fans and Chevy stalwarts over who's got the stoutest small block. A battle that's been waged on and off the track for years, and today we're going to duke it out right here in the shop. Yeah, now both manufacturers offer stout-hearted small blocks right out of the crate, and they both benefit from proven parts, ample output, and affordable price tags. So we ordered the latest and greatest small blocks from both Ford and Chevy to give you a close-up look at the hardware it takes and the horsepower they make. What's more, we're going to stage a small block slugfest using the newest addition to the horsepower shop, our portable engine dyno we got from land and sea that measures up to 800 horsepower. Now this is the control console where we can measure things like horsepower, torque, and all the engine's vital signs. Plus, the computer makes all the calculations and stores them in memory, which comes in pretty handy when you're doing things like component-to-component -component testing. Now, this is the actual dyno test stand that mounts the engine and provides the connections for sensors and other hookups. Back here, we have the absorption unit, which is essentially a large water break that's connected to the engine with this special dyno drive coupler that we got from McLeod Industries. Now, this thing will bolt up to either flywheels or flex plates and accepts this special 10-spline shaft from the absorption unit. Now, what that absorption unit does, actually, is measure engine torque and, well, of course, horsepower is a mathematical calculation of torque and RPM. Well, now that we know how it works, what do you say we meet the challengers? Stay tuned as we mash the gas to see if it's the Chevy or the Ford making the most power on our new engine dyno. Man, 448 horsepower. You know, the stock ZZ4 is only rated at 355 horse, so I guess that hot cam and fast burn heads are really doing the job. Yeah, I guess so. Well, I bet that Windsor's just as strong. Come on, let's get that mouse off the stand and get the rat killer running. I'm with you. <laughs> well, now we're ready to see if this bad blue oval can exterminate the mouse's numbers. Windsor's rated at 385, and we made uh, 412 there. That's better than I expected. It really is. That was a great run. Now, you did come up a little bit short compared to that small block Chevy, but hey, both of these crate engines are winners in our book. Now, stay tuned. We'll be right back after this. I like our new toy. Oh, man, this is great. Check this out. I can't believe all the information we get off of this thing. Pontiacs are on the warpath today. How do 600 horses on pump gas sound to you? Today on Horsepower TV, we'll show you how to build a hot pump gas Pontiac 455 complete with forged pistons, Victor intake, and 1050 CFM carb. Then we'll test this iron engine on our Horsepower Shop Dyno. So hang on for Horsepower TV. Hey, welcome back to the Horsepower Shop where it's time to finish the buildup on our 455 Pontiac before we strap it to the engine dyno. Hey, what was that trick you were going to tell us about? For a leak-proof seal, you want to install the balancer before tightening up that timing cover. That way, the seal can center itself, then you can cinch everything down. Oh, by the way, that balancer bolt there torques down to 160 foot-pounds. 
Well, I just relash the valves, and once I get this cover tight, hey, we're going to be ready to make some power pulls. <laughs> 612 horsepower. On pump gas at that. Now that's one potent Pontiac. <laughs> okay, stay with us. We got more horsepower TV coming up.